All matter is composed of two types of fundamental particles, quarks and leptons. Quarks are the building blocks of hadrons, the two best known examples of which are protons and neutrons. Hadrons that are made of three quarks, such as protons and neutrons, are known as baryons. Hadrons that are made of two quarks, a quark and an antiquark pair, are called mesons. Quarks come in six flavors, in increasing order of mass, up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom. And they also come in three colors, red, green and blue. Now, obviously, these are just cute names that physicists have come up with. Quarks aren't colored in the normal sense, but in the theory of quantum chromodynamics, the theory that describes the action of the strong force, they do have different types of color charge, which affects how they interact via the strong force. The flavors of quarks, on the other hand, refer to their weak charges, and so govern how they interact via the weak force. Quarks are the only elementary particles in the standard model of particle physics that can experience all four fundamental forces, electromagnetism, gravitation, the strong force and the weak force. They're also the only known particles whose electric charges aren't integer multiples of the elementary charge. Up, charm and top quarks have an electric charge of plus two thirds and down, strange and bottom quarks of minus one third in units where the charge of the proton is one. A proton is made of two up quarks and one down quark, while a neutron is made of two downs and one up. Owing to a phenomenon known as color confinement, quarks are never found in isolation. They can be found only within hadrons or in quark gluon plasmas. The color force between quarks favors confinement because at a certain range, as this animation shows, it's more energetically favorable to create a quark-antiquark pair than to continue to stretch the quarks apart. The modern story of quarks began in 1964 when Murray Gelman and George Zweig suggested that hundreds of the particles known at the time could be explained as combinations of just three fundamental particles. Gelman chose the name quarks for these three particles from a nonsense word used by James Joyce in his novel Finnegan's Wake. Three quarks for Muster Mark. In order to make their calculations work, the quarks had to be assigned fractional electrical charges. Such charges had never been observed before so that initially quarks were regarded as a mere mathematical contrivance. Subsequent experiments convinced physicists that not only do quarks exist, but there are six of them, not three. Evidence for three different quark-like constituents of protons and neutrons became clear in the late 1960s and 1970s. In 1974, a new particle was unexpectedly discovered at Stanford Linear Accelerator Center. It was given the dual name J Psi because of its simultaneous discovery by two groups of experimenters. The J Psi was later shown to be a bound state of a new quark-antiquark pair, which nevertheless had been predicted on the basis of a subtle phenomenon. The new fourth quark was named Charm. The four-quark scheme was extended to its present state of six quarks by the addition of a new pair, top and bottom, in a prediction by theorists. So now we have these six quarks and each have their partner antiquarks. In various combinations, they make up all the mesons and baryons that have been seen. Twenty years ago, physicists didn't know of any particle that contained other than two or three quarks, then, in 2003, the first tetraquark, made of four quarks, was found, and since then researchers have discovered a number of other tetraquarks and pentaquarks, containing four or five quarks. 
all as short-lived products in high-energy collision experiments. <laughs>